Go on, please. Physics defines momentum as the force that keeps an object moving. Momentum can also be used to predict the direction of two objects after they collide. In tennis, it is the psychological and physical effects of momentum that determine the direction of a match. A player seemingly in the ascendancy during a match is often said to have the momentum. Momentum in tennis can swing wildly from point to point, game to game, set to set. In fact, momentum doesn't always follow the score and the scoreboard doesn't always reflect the momentum. However, momentum can play a big part in a match. Sometimes it's the game changer. At times, it can define the victor. Swings in momentum are referred to as turning points. These can be obvious. A player's switch in tactics after losing a set, a brilliant winner when on the ropes in a rally, or an untimely double fault causing an opponent tightening up. However, sometimes they can be so small as to be imperceptible, winning a point they would otherwise have lost if it wasn't for a hopeful Hawkeye challenge may give a losing player the small boost they need to reset, kick on and fight back. Momentum can turn on anything. In 2003, Greg Rosensky stopped during a point at Wimbledon after confusing a shout from the crowd for a line judge's out call. When the point was not replayed, he fumed so much that his 5-2 lead in the third set was wiped out, and opponent Andy Roddick took it 7-5. I tried to stop myself, but it's easier said than done, and Roddick took advantage, Rosetsky admitted afterwards. I lost it a little bit. Unfortunately, if most people lose it at work, it doesn't get shown on TV. If I do, it does. By understanding momentum and the part it can play in results, Players can employ methods and tactics in-game to ensure they're in control of momentum rather than a victim of it. In his book, Momentum, the Hidden Force in Tennis, Alistair Hyam, formerly the LTA's head of coach education, defines five distinct phases of momentum. At one end of the spectrum, when momentum is totally against a player, Hyam suggests slowing things down, being deliberate and following rituals. At the point where momentum is turning against said player, Hyam recommends increasing energy and playing more aggressively. When momentum is neutral, both players are vying to not only win points, but also seize control of the momentum. As such, both will tend to play their primary patterns on serve and return. When momentum is in a player's favour, Hyam notes it's important to rationalise winning and play smart, understand how they arrived at this point. Some players struggle to convert from this stage, perhaps falling into a false sense of security or overconfidence. Finally, when momentum is totally with a player, the opponent is most likely to change tactics. Hyam says the player on top should also seek to mix up their game to keep their downtrodden foe on the back foot. At the moment momentum starts to influence a match, players should begin to recognize which of those five stages they're at and contextualize their situation so as to retain focus and maintain control of their emotions. But how does one quantify momentum? More often than not, it can simply be the proportion of points won by a player over a short period of time. TV coverage often notes when a player has won, say, nine of the last ten points. You can also record the number of consistent points or games won by a player, particularly either on or against serve, and assign a momentum score. To take it a step further, you could assign weighting to more important points or clutch moments in games. Regardless of how it's measured, the momentum score is important to gauge a player's state of mind. Having won the first three points of a game, for example, a player's confidence will be high on game point, and yet concentration may drop if they feel too relaxed. At this stage, it's critical to play the scenario your opponent likes the least. They will be on the other end of the momentum, after all, and feeling the pressure. Coaches often use the phrase, play the score, when perhaps in reality they should be saying, play the momentum score. At 30 all, the score might seem even, but there are multiple ways that score could have materialized. The same applies in team sports, where draws are possible. A tied result will be well received by the team who were behind, but less so by the team who led and yet it is the same end result. 
According to Dan Travis and Sterling Stother in The Art of Winning, players statistically win twice as many points when they're down in the momentum score compared to when they're up in the momentum score. By studying momentum and understanding it, players can develop a radar for spotting changes in momentum and employ the necessary tools, both tactically and psychologically, to keep turning points on an even keel. Coaches can likewise learn lots about prospective opponents by charting their momentum score and understanding how that player reacts to the momentum score. Doing so can help players and coaches identify how and where matches are won and lost. And who doesn't want to be able to do that?